Hello everyone. Welcome to the online lecture series for 12th 2021-22. Subject English. Organized by Gokhale Education Societies, BYK College of Commerce, Nashik. In this video, we will see detailed explanation of the poem 2.3, The Inch Cape Rock by Robert Saudi. Presented by Sharda Nagar Goje, Department of English, BYK College of Commerce, Junior College Unit. The Inch Cape Rock Title of a literary piece, prose or poetry, sometimes carries the name of a character, sometimes the name of a thing. The title, The Inch Cape Rock, has been taken from the name of legendary rock, which is the center of all the events. The Inch Cape Rock had caused a lot of shipwrecks previously. Then, to avoid misfortune, accidents, the good abbot tied a bell to that to warn the passing ship of the danger of the rock. Later, the villainous Ralph cut the bell from the rock to help his own cause of looting the ship ships in danger of the rock and in the end the villain gets punished when his own ship hits the inch cape rock and he dies so we see that the entire story revolves around the inch cape rock so i think it couldn't have a better title straightforwardly and suggesting what the story is all about that is why the title of the poem is just uh, appropriate. The Inch Cape Rock is a ballad. Now we'll see what is ballad. A ballad is a song that tells a story and it can be dramatic, funny or romantic. Traditionally, the ballad has been considered a folkloric verse and it is narrative which has strong associations with communal dancing. Generally, this term is used for a narrative poem which uses an elliptical and highly stylized mode of narration. A typical ballad consists of stanzas that contain a quatrain or four poetic lines. Some ballads have a refrain or a repeated chorus just like a song does. The rhyme scheme adds musical quality to the poem. The Inch Cape Rock is a ballad composed in a narrative style and the rhyming couplets follow the rhyme scheme AABB. This poem is divided into 17 stanzas made of 4 lines each. Before we learn poem, let us see the information about the poet. Robert Saudi was born in Bristol, England. He was the son of Draper, educated at Westminster School and Balliol College, Oxford. He was a poet laureate of England from 1813 to 1843. Some of his short poems like The Scholar, The Battle of Belham, Bishop Hato, the Inch Cape Rock are very popular with the school children. Saudi was inspired by the legendary story of a pirate who removed the bale on the Inch Cape Rock placed by the abbot of Aberbrothok. The poem gives us a message that those who do wrong things will meet with due punishment. Let us see the central idea of the poem. Like many of Saudi's ballads, the Inch Cape Rock describes a supernatural event. But its basic theme is that those who do bad things will ultimately be punished accordingly and poetic justice done. Those who do bad things meet with a bad end at the hands of fate. The bad person always punished for his bad deeds. The idea of what goes around 
comes around is at the core of the poem the inch cape rock teaches a moral lesson as you sow so shall you reap and it proves the principle that crime gets its own punishment and it is a theme of this beautiful poem the inch cape rock by robert saudi let us see the line by line explanation of the poem the inch cape rock no star in the air no star in the sea the ship was as still as she could be her sails from heaven received no motion her keel was steady in the ocean in this stanza poet describes the calmness of the sea no star in the air no star in the sea here star means movement there is no movement in the air the atmosphere of the sea is calm and quiet the ship was as still as she could be her sails from heaven received no motion her keel was steady in the ocean the air the sea the ship all were still the sails of the ship were getting no motion from the wind its keel was steady in the ocean keel is the under frame of a ship or boat that keeps it afloat or it is a long piece of wood in this way poet described the calmness of the sea air and the ship because there was no movement no stir in the atmosphere without either sign or sound of their shock the waves flowed over the inch cape rock so little they rose so little they fell they didn't move the inch cape pale in this stanza poet describes the mild sea waves the waves were rising and falling so little that they didn't make any sign or sound the waves were gently flowing over the inch cape rock without ringing the bell and this is the place of dangerous inch cape rock the abbot of averbrothok had placed that bell on the inch cape rock on a boy in the storm it floated and swung and over the waves its warning rang in the third st- stanza the poet describes about the bell who had placed the bell and what was the intention the intention was that whenever there would be a storm whenever there would be a surging waves at that time the inch cape rock was covered with the waves and it was not seen by sailors and in a way the ship could dash against the inch cape rock in order to save the life of the sailors the good old abbot of aberbrothok positioned the inch cape bale on the inch cape rock this talks about the great monk abbot of aberbrothok and his benevolent deed of placing the warning bell over inch cape rock he placed it on a boy whenever stony waves will initiate this bell starts making warning sounds and this warns the mariners and their ship from the shipwreck boy is floating object anchored in the sea to mark dangerous places during the storms it floated on a boy and rang widely swung by the high tides to alert everyone that the dangerous rock was there when the rock was hit by the surge swell the mariners heard the warning bell and then they knew the perilous rock and blessed the abbot of aberbrothok this stanza 
talks about the utility of the bell and in the next four lines the poet tells us how the bell guided the mariners in the bad weather the seamen could not see the rock as it stayed hidden under the high waves during the storms but they could hear the bell ringing and went away from the perilous that is dangerous rock so the bell saved their lives then the mariners blessed the abbot for his good job they used to bless abbot of aberbrothock for this noble deed search swell is a sudden and great rise in the level of the sea blessed is old english form of blessed the sun in heaven was shining gay all things were joyful on that day the sea birds screamed as they wheeled round and there was joyance in their sound this stanza talks about the jubilant weather it was a bright sunny day everything of nature seemed to be mirthful on that day the sea birds are screaming while flying around and the sounds created by them were filled with joy here poet used symbolism and personification heaven is a symbol of sky and the sun is described as gay means happy the boy of the inch cape bell was seen a darker speck on the ocean green sir ralph the rover walked his deck and he fixed his eye on the darker speck this stanza tells us about the boy and sir ralph's approach to the inch cape rock in this stanza sir ralph is introduced for the first time on that fine day the boy on the inch cape rock was clearly visible as it was a blackish spot in the green ocean sir ralph the rover went on to the deck of his vessel and gazed at dark spot of the boy boy is floating object anchored in the sea to mark dangerous places darker speck is nothing but the inch cape rock that is seen as a spot from long distance in the sea so it appears as a dark spot in the ocean he felt the cheering power of spring it made him whistle it made him sing his heart was mirthful to excess but the rover's mirth was wickedness here poet shows how sir ralph was joyous over the pleasant spring weather and how he had the wicked intention sir ralph is found at the utmost peak of mirth he felt very happy he was singing and whistling but this mirth is actually his wickedness he was making whistling sounds and singing in joy he was actually overjoyed but no one knew that a sinful thought in his mind was behind this happiness and he was having wicked plan his eye was on the inch cape float quoth he my men put out the boat and row me to the inch cape rock and i will play the abbot of aberbrothock in the eighth stanza we see the real wickedness of sir ralph he looked intently at the inch cape rock and roar himself speaks and reveals his desire his eyes were fixed on the floating boy on the inch cape rock sir ralph the rover ordered his crew ordered his men to take the boat to the inch cape rock then he says that he is going to plague means destroy the good work of the abbot of aberbrothock sir ralph was a wicked man 
and he was having the plan of destroying the inch cape belt he wanted to spoil the good name of abbot of aberbrothock the boat is lowered the boat main row and to the inch cape rock they go sir ralph bent over from the boat and he cut the bell from the inch cape float in the ninth stanza poet shows execution of his wicked plans the rowers men took the boat to the inch cape rock and there he bent over the boat and cut the bell from the rock and in this way he was successful in his wicked plan down sang the bell with a gurgling sound the bubbles rose and burst around coach sir ralph the next who comes to the rock won't blaze the abbot of aberbrothock in tenth stanza the poet pictures how the bell was sinking down and making the bubbling sound bubbles rose and burst around sir ralph was very happy and thought that the bell would save no more ships and the sea men would no longer blaze the abbot the word gurgling denotes the sound made by the bell as it sunk in the ocean so the figure of speech is onomatopoeia pia sir ralph the rover sailed away he scoured the seas for many a day and now grown rich with plundered store he steers his course for scotland shore sir ralph the rover then sailed away from the rock then thereafter he had robbed and looted many ships which met accidents crashing to the inch cape rock he is now a rich man with all the looted treasures and today he is going to the scotland shore with his ship so in this way we find that ralph the rover sailed away and he rode on the sea for so many days he grew rich by looting so many ships and finally he directed his ships towards the scotland shore so thick a haze over spreads the sky they cannot see the sun on high the wind hath blown a gale all day at evening it hath died away in 12 stanza poet describes the gloomy atmosphere on that day the rover is sailing to scotland the sun is hidden behind the thick fog strong winds were blowing all the day and now in the evening it has stopped blowing a day is a day is troubled with with ill weather the sun is not visible as because of hazy sky throughout the day wind had blown like a storm at the evening the wind died away signifying the approach of a horrible storm on the deck the rover takes his stand so dark it is they see no land quoth sir alp it will be lighter soon for there is the dawn of the rising moon sir alp was found standing on the deck the atmosphere was so dark that they could not see anything sir alp was optimistic that and thinking that there will be a change in the weather he assumes that there will be dawn of the rising moon canst hear said one the breakers roar for me things we should be near the shore now where we are i cannot tell but i wish i could hear the inch cape bell this stanza is the beginning of the end one of the sailors stated that he could hear the breakers sound breakers are the heavy sea waves that breaks into white foam on the shore it signifies that shore is very near 
he further states that he does not have any idea where they stand with the sheep but ralph had strong wish if he, he if he could hear the warning sound of the inch cape bell and he also regrets that the inch cape bell is no more as it could guided them in this situation they hear no sound the swell is strong though the wind hath fallen they drift along till the vessel strikes with a shivering shock o oh christ it is the inch cape rock they are unable to hear anything over the waves and though there is no wind their ship has drifted off towards the inch cape rock and before they even realize the ship violently collides with it and thus the accident took place sir ralp the rover tore his hair he cursed himself in his despair the waves rush in every side the ship is sinking beneath the tide sir ralp the rover pulls his hair in frustration he curses himself for his evil deed that is for cutting off the bell from the rock as he lost all hope his ship sank with water entering from all sides and it starts sinking in the sea but even in his dying fear one dreadful sound could the rover hear a sound as if with the inch cape bell the devil below was ringing his nail in this last stanza of the poem as sir ralph is frightened as the ship sinks and he is dying at that time he hears a sound like ringing of the inch cape bell that is his death bell it was actually his death nail that devil himself was ringing beneath the water thus the rover gets punishment for his sinful work sir ralph was jealous of good name of abbot of aberbrothock and that's why he performed wicked deed but finally he had punished he had punished finally this poem comes with the theme of crime and punishment if you commit crime or something wrong you are bound to get punishment robert saudi is a poet who always delivers a teaching through his poems and this is to you not an exception and it is applicable to everyone so think before doing any evil deed let's see the moral of this beautiful ballad moral of the beautiful ballad is if somebody digs a pit for others he himself falls into it and thus this ballad has story of adventure plundering jealousy and comes out with a moral let us see the figures of speech of the poem what is alliteration alliteration is the close repetition of the sound here are some examples from the poem the first one is no stir in the air no stir in the sea the ship was as still as she could be the close repetition of the sound yes here i have explained first one and the remaining examples you will do it you will go through it let us see the next figure of speech inversion what is inversion in inversion the order of the words has been rearranged for a poetic effect here some examples of inversion from the poem 
her sails from heaven received no motion the correct order should be her sails received no motion from heaven and you will do the rest of the examples onomatopoeia here are some examples from the poem what is onomatopoeia in this figure of speech the words indicate sound the first example let us see the first example it made him whistle it made him sing the word whistle denotes the sound made while whistling it made him whistle it made him sing down sang the bell with a gurgling sound canst hear said one the breakers roar the devil below was ringing his nail whistle gurgling roar and ringing all these words indicates sound so all these are the examples of onomatopoeia let us see the next figure of speech antithesis in this figure of speech opposite words or opposite ideas are used so little they rose so little they fell opposite words rose and fell have been used in the line to show the movement of the waves repetition so little they rose so little they fell the words so little they have been repeated in the line for a poetic effect symbolism and personification the sun in heaven was shining gay heaven is used as a symbol for sky and the sun is described as gay means happy in this example sun is personified in this video we studied the poem the inch cape rock hope you understood it very well there is another video on appreciation of this poem and also i have given animated video link of this poem in the description box so please watch it best luck for studies and thank you